Welcome back to the Cymax channel. Today I'm going to build on the, the last video I did on semantic uh, searching of BibTeX and expand the idea of what semantic matching might be good for in completing read for Emacs. So uh, completing read is a very common uh, feature of Emacs where you can have a bunch of candidates and then you, uh, you have to select one and you just start typing and it narrows down uh, to do it. So let's uh, just see if you're not familiar with this. Here's an example. Um, we have a bunch of words here. Uh, there's some fruits, there's some animals, some trees, some minerals, and completing read will give us uh, each of these. And I'll just run it here. So if I want, let's say I want snake, I start typing SN and I get snake. Um, what you can't do with this, though, is narrow by, by a category. So th these are all unlabeled. So if I type fruit, uh, you know there are fruit in here, but we can't get it by any completing read uh, mechanism in Emacs uh, that's out of the box. So that's what I really uh, have been exploring is how do we do that? How do we get to completion by context here? And so I've been kind of building this, uh, this library, Semantic Completing Read. It's really a prototype, so I'm not, I'm not releasing it yet. I'm just gonna show you some of the things that it does, uh, some of the ideas um, that are there. And I'll get to the code later and talk about how it works. I wanna focus here on uh, what it looks like when we use it. So what I wanted was, given the same list of strings here, I want to be able to type fruit and get a list of the fruits that are in there so that I can select one of them. So the way uh, I, I do this, I generate the candidates. This is just a list of the strings, and we call this semantic read with the candidates. There's a, a little label here that I have to include, and uh, here is a, an action to perform on it. So it's kind of like um, Ivy Read. It actually builds on Ivy Read um, in there. So let's just see it in action, right? So first, um, if I start typing fruit, I can get uh, a list sorted where all the fruits come first and everything else comes last. All right? I can also uh, make this a mineral. All right? And then these uh, these minerals come up first. Or we could say um, let's uh, let's try pet. That gives us dog and cat. Or animal uh, orders these all by uh, by that. And so that's the that's the gist of what uh, completing read with semantic completion does. Is that it allows me to match based on meaning, not a literal match uh, by some pattern. So I think that could be useful. Uh, this is a, a, a prototype example. Let's look at an idea of, of using it for synonyms. If you were trying to select a synonym, um, here are a bunch of words that are synonyms for angry, happy, and hungry. Um, we can do se this semantic read on, uh, on this as well. So here, um, let's say I type in angry. And here I get a bunch of words that are related to anger, um, or I can type in hungry, and we get a bunch of words that are related to being hungry, um, and and even uh, you know words like this that um, are kind of related, and we can similarly look at happy, and this one's interesting. Uh, here we get angered as a as a close match, and I think that in the semantic kind of way this is done the vector embedding for happy and the vector embedding for angered are the closest together uh, of this list. Um, and so you, you have to uh, look at uh, some things like this to um, expect the, the way this is ordered depends on the embedding and, and I'll talk about what that, that is uh, in, at, at the end. There are lots of ways to embed that will give you uh, different kinds of results. Now what else could we do with this? Um, one of the things I do a lot in org mode is, is jump to a heading. So if I get all the headings in, um, yeah, so for example, IV or jump to heading um, like this, then I get a list of, of all the headings in here and, um, and I can only match these you know, exactly. So if I put um, barrier, I don't find any matches at all. Um, if I use semantic matching though, I can grab all the headlines. This code here just grabs all the headlines. Um, and here we um, will we'll do this search. Um, here if I type barrier, uh, I already get to limitations. So barrier and limitations are similar, and so I can find things uh, easily. And here if I um, press enter, it will jump directly to, uh, to that spot in my uh, org file. 
So you could use this, you could imagine doing this for all kinds of, um, of searches. You might uh, look at all of these paragraphs, you might choose the sentences in a, in a document and be able to jump to a sentence uh, based on the, the meaning. Um, another idea might be for searching documentation with something that is a more natural language query. Um, again, there are things like info, info apropos, things where you can, um, you can try to find um, the doc strings, but they almost always rely on regular expression matching or on exact matching. And so you'll have trouble finding things if you don't know the right word. And semantic meaning can find things that are similar. So here I, um, I'm just taking the org table uh, library and we gather all the, um, all the elements of it. Here I get all the functions and then here I am getting all the doc strings for all those functions and then we can do semantic reading on the doc strings. All right, so let's, uh, let's run it first and um, let's say we want to remove a column from a table. So I just type remove a column uh, actually, by remove A, we already get to delete a column from the table. And if we run this, uh, it will, um, here, it, it should pop up a message box. You can't see it in the video, but it tells me the, the function is org table uh, delete column. Um, let's see. We can, maybe it's describe function. Um, let's go down to, let me change this so that we get something that is um, describe that you can see in here. So describe function, uh, this is collecting a string in the function, so let's see if this works. Um, remove a column. All right, so that, that gets me directly to uh, org table delete column, and I don't have to know exactly those words. Um, so I think that's a pretty helpful um, way to think about this. Uh, you could imagine that you can search all of the info pages, all of the doc strings in Emacs by this context, uh, semantic similarity. So let me take a little bit of time here and, and kind of walk through how this, uh, how this works and what some of the things uh, we have to do are. So I, I started writing this. It's, it's really just a proof of concept. So I, again, I'm not planning on uh, removing or uh, releasing it in its present form. There's a couple limitations that I think are need to be thought through. Um, but the gist is that we run a Flask app. And uh, this Flask app relies on Flask uh, sentence transformers and FAISS. -A so this is the embedding model that takes my query and turns it into a vector. FISS is a vector database that we use for searching. So here I just check that these things are installed. Um, we run this locally so it runs on um, you know on the loopback uh, at this port and this is the script. So the gist of the script is you know we make a sentence transformer and a vector database uh, here. The app uh, is pretty simple. Um, there's only uh, two main methods. We post a query like this, so you have to pass the data, we get the text, we encode the, the query, and then here we just get uh, the top 20 searches, uh, search results, and then it returns uh, a list of strings uh, that match. So, so it just gets these indices and uh, matches them uh, and prints out those things back to uh, back to the buffer. And then we have a load candidates. Um, this is a kind of a tricky point. So we have to create the database. So we have to take our candidates from Emacs, send them to the server uh, with this put method. The candidates are here. We generate uh, the embeddings uh, just by encoding each one. So we, this is a pre-trained model, no, no, no uh, fine-tuning uh, at all. And then we just add that to the index. These are all global variables, and that's that. Now, this step is a little slow. If you have 4,000, you know, thousands of strings, this can take several seconds to a minute. Um, and so we don't want to do this every single time. And so what I, um, what I do is, is store the, a name on the server so I know what set is currently um, loaded 
and if we're using the same set then we don't reload it. That's just a cache mechanism that speeds things up. All right, so that's the Python side. Uh, we run this in a, in a process, so um, I, I store that script in this Emacs Lisp file. Um, we make a temp file and run it so the server is running. We have a stop thing here. This is how we load strings. So uh, we use the request library and um, generate the, the data for the request here. Um, it's just a, a JSON encoded dictionary with the name and candidates. We can get the registered name here. Again, just a little um, HTTP request. Um, here is, let me skip down to this one first. So SCR semantic read is the main thing we do. Um, when you run this function, it takes strings, name, and action. We start our server. Here we load the strings if the server doesn't match what our name is. Uh, and and then we just use IV read. So this is just a dynamic collection that uses uh, curl to update the candidates uh, as you um, as you're typing. So as you're typing, we asynchronously run this curl command, send the query to it. It gives us a list of candidates back, and that's what we're actually getting out of uh, out of IV. So there's really nothing uh, too fancy about that. Um, and we just run a server because if you try to do this as a command line uh, script, it takes usually two or three seconds per uh, per update, which I, which is just too slow. And with the server running, it's actually quite fast. Uh, everything's local, and you know until you get into thousands of candidates, uh, it's not that not that tricky. A um, couple of limitations I've kind of found so far is the your candidates have to be single lines because when we send it to the server, the server sends back um, the, the candidates, but the dynamic collection splits that on line returns. So that, that messes things up if you have multi-line candidates, which you would have, uh, which you do have from uh, doc strings uh, and other kinds of things. I'm not sure if that's fixable um, through the dynamic collection um, maybe there's some clever character escaping you can do um, where you replace the line feeds with something else uh, to encode them and then unencode them. I don't know. Uh, that's a, a detail that uh, still has to be worked out. Um, the other thing is with the dynamic collection, you don't see any candidates at the beginning because there's nothing to match. And I don't know what to do about that. I like to see uh, candidates uh, at the very beginning. There may be a solution, but I just haven't worked it out. Um, for large collections, this initial creation of the vector base database is, is pretty noticeable. Um, like I said, it can take half a minute to a minute for my large BibTeX collection. And um, it's, it's a one-time cost. After that, the server is running and it's pretty fast. So there, there probably needs to be some way to uh, persistently store these things and make them easily, uh, easy to update. But currently, that's uh, that's not um, possible. I do use caching to speed that up, um, but I have run into cache invalidation issues. Like if you decide to change the candidates, but you keep the same name, uh, you have to change the the name. Um, I have a lot of muscle memory on how IV works, so I'm um, really accustomed to being able to type a word I see and, and get it. And that doesn't work here because we use similarity. So it, it'd be interesting if we could like switch between these two uh, completion methods. Um, and then finally, um, the semantic similarity is only as good as that embedding model. Uh, let me switch back to it real quick. Um, the embedding model that we used is right here. There are lots of these uh, different models you can use and you can fine tune uh, on your particular um, case. So if it was really important or you had a very uh, technical document, you might want to use a more scientific sentence transformer or uh, a more domain specific one. Um, I chose to do this totally local, uh, but you could also use a cloud API for this kind of application. So you could you could use some open AI or some other uh, chat GPT or something like that to get uh, to get embeddings uh, for this similarity. Um, I don't want to do that. 
it costs money, I have private stuff I don't want uh, to be sending out, etc. Um, I don't really love the Emacs Flasp app interaction, it's a little clunky, um, but there it's better than a command line program, it's much faster, and uh, there's not much hope in getting a pure Emacs solution to this because the you you need that embedding uh, transformer, so you would either need like uh, compiled bindings that allow Emacs to call some C library uh, for the embedding, but you also need um, bindings and interaction with the vector database uh, for the search. Now there are um, some examples with vector databases that include like SQLite, PostgreSQL. They both have uh, vector search plugins now. So it's, it's probably going to be possible to use those as the vector database uh, for searching, but you, you have to provide your own vectors uh, to those. So uh, at least with SQLite, that's the case. Um, and they're still pretty early on. Uh, so I, I don't imagine that there is a way to get a pure Emacs uh, solution um, here uh, that doesn't involve this uh, Python web app uh, for the time being. So anyway, that is, um, that is it for, uh, for the completing read um, idea. Um, the main idea here is, uh, I don't know, let's see, uh, let's see here. The main idea again is um, that we have this uh, semantic completing read where you have groups of words that are, are, are close in some embedding vector space. You make a uh, query here, say fruit, that gets turned into uh, some embedding vector, and then this embedding vector will be closer to these words than these words, and so these will get sorted uh, sorted up. So that's the main idea that, uh, that I've been working on, and I think there's a lot of potential here uh, but still a couple of details that, that I need to work out before turning this into uh, some new, new feature of, of Cymax. Anyway, hope you enjoy it and uh, come back again.